Hello you my strong, happy and healthy people, Tia Mart here. So in this video I'm going to talk a lot about hypothyroidism and my journey over the last four years. Now I'm not going to go into too much of what hypothyroidism is, I will make another video on that in the future, but there is a bunch of information online about it, so I recommend if you are at that point and you're trying to figure out what it is, I'd recommend going to check out one of those from an expert. But this is all about my journey, everything I've done, the mistakes I've made, and just I think there could be someone out there that could use this information and get some value from what I've been through. Now I've been suffering from hypothyroidism for about four years now and my journey has definitely been a journey. Now the thing is I am a strength and conditioning coach. I am relatively fit, healthy. I was quite lean when I first got diet. Um, I was quite lean before I got diagnosed with hypothyroidism. I was not lean by the time I got diagnosed. Now what happened to me about four years ago is I was training powerlifting at a competitive level and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu at the time I think I was a blue belt, I don't know if I was a purple belt, yes, maybe I just got my purple belt, no, nope. I think I was a blue. Anyway, so wrestling and powerlifting, and at the same time I was doing strength and conditioning, I was doing a lot of cardio, and I was training like a mad person. I counted at one point, I was up to about 13 hard training sessions a week. Now, and even a high level athlete does not really train this much, I was definitely being a little bit silly. The problem is I loved it. I loved everything about being sweaty and training and being exhausted. I craved that hard training feeling. Now, some people could be okay with training this much, but the problem is I was only eating about 2000 calories a day, which is a decent amount for a female, but not a decent amount if you're training as much as you are as much as I was, so I was definitely in a massive calorie deficit. I was easily burning the 2,000 calories just in my training sessions, let alone what I needed for recovery, let alone what I needed for every day. So as you could probably guess, I felt like crap. I did not feel good. Now, I had a little bit of body fat left. I was a fairly chubby teenager growing up, so I was super obsessed with um, fitness. I lost about 25 kilograms when I was about 18, 19 years old. Then I got into fitness, got into martial arts, and I was super obsessed with being lean and keeping my body where it was. At this point, I was about 60 kilos and I wanted to get about 58 kilos, just like two kilos more, which some reason seems to be possible. So I was training harder than ever. I was eating as clean as possible. There was not one chemical, one piece of unhealthy food that ever passed my lips. Now, one day my skin started to break out. It, I started to puff up, I started to really puffy, I started to get a lot of gut issues, I started bloating, I started being in pain, my stomach looked pregnant, and within the course of about four months, I gained about 25 kilograms of body fat. Now the worst part about this is, I'm watching the scales every day, because I weighed myself every single day, and I knew I counted every piece of rice, every gram of food that went into my mouth, yes I was very obsessive, and I can see now, now I can look back on it everywhere I went wrong. Now I was looking at the scales and I could see it gets to 65 kilos and I was like, I'm not letting that go over 65 kilos. So because of that, I trained harder, I started eating less food. Then I started trickling to 68 kilos. I've not been 68 kilos since I was since I was about 18 at this time, I think I was about 23, 24. And then next minute it gets to 70 and I was like, I'm not letting you go over 70. The last time I looked at the scales, it was 85 kilograms and that's because I could not look at it anymore and it definitely went higher than 85 kilograms. I'm gonna assume because of how much weight I gained that it was over 90 kilograms. And for someone that is, I think I'm like 5'4", 5'5", not the tallest person in the world, I definitely looked quite overweight. Now the worst part about this is I work in the fitness industry. So I run my own business as a fitness coach and here I am overweight, bloated, my whole skin breaking out, I look very unattractive, and all my clients are looking at me like, are you okay? Are you dealing with something? Are you emotionally okay? You look like you've gained gained a little bit. And I'm sitting there like, I'm, I don't I don't know. Like, I don't know what to do. So this is what I did. I went to a doctor. I went to my normal GP. This is a GP I've had for a couple of years. She was this cute little Indian lady. Absolutely loved her. She was fantastic. Went to her and said, so I'm gaining weight. I don't know what I'm doing. I am eating all this food. I'm training like crazy. Nothing's working. She looked at me, she's like, it's not weight, it's muscle. And I was like, okay, muscle doesn't jiggle. I know it's weight. Can you please do a blood test, test my thyroid hormone, test my adrenals, like find out what is going on. At this point, I've done some research and I looked online and it said thyroid might be the cause of unexpected weight gain, of overtraining. So I was like, okay, cool. That sounds like me. So this GP literally said, no, I'm not going to test you. I'm not going to run any blood tests. 
she didn't have a student in the room at the time so i'm wondering if she did that because she had a student that's just trying to make a point but it's probably one of the silliest things she can do so i literally walked out of my doctor went to receptions and said i want to see another doctor now i walked straight into a, another doctor and he gave me a full blood panel straight away he's like oh let's test you for everything it was over like a thousand dollar blood panel but we were in australia thank you australia for helping me out and we got the results back i had nothing really abnormal so the thyroid hormone the range for the TSH is quite a big range and most doctors only check the TSH. You didn't check my T3 or T4. And if you're on a thyroid journey and you've done much research in the thyroid, you understand TSH means nothing. My TSH now is so suppressed, it's 0.01. If any of these doctors saw that, they would automatically take me off all thyroid medication and think that I should be the skinniest person in the world because I should be hyperthyroid. But it's, that's not the case because TSH is, I'll explain in another video, but it does not mean anything in this case. So they only checked my TSH and it was a 3.4 and it had to be a 3.6 for them in order to actually medicate me. And he said that you need to gain a bit more weight for me to actually find it like find a good reason to medicate you. And I was just like, I'm physically dying here. I felt like shit. I was depressed. Like I just went through a breakup at this time. And the last thing you want is to run into your ex when you're overweight and covered in your skin breaking out and just look like an absolute wreck especially at like 23 years old now uh after that i ended up finding a specialist he actually cost about 350 dollars for a 30 minute appointment i went to him he picked up my piece of paper and he said you got a thyroid issue i'm like i know i have a thyroid issue but no doctors will medicate me and then he said well you also have a thyroid issue and you have absolutely no sex hormones now this was really interesting to me that my body didn't have any estrogen, testosterone or progesterone, progesterone, I'm going to butcher it. Um, the thing is that at this time I had no desire for dating, no desire for attraction towards the opposite sex, absolutely nothing. And the reason being that because of my thyroid, I was no longer making any sex hormones whatsoever. It was very good for running your own business because you're quite driven and you didn't think about anything else but running your own business, like none of that other stuff came into play. But I didn't realize how bad my body was. So when he looked at my paperwork, he realized that I was quite ill. And he put me straight on um, a natural thyroid medication. Now, natural thyroid medication is directly from a pig's thyroid hormone. Now, they take it from a pig. I think they get it from New Zealand. They dry them up and then they make them into little pills. The good thing about the natural thyroid medication is it's a mix between T3 and T4 because it's taken directly from their thyroid. And your body gets a bit of both and it'll take kind of what it needs. So this medication was great at the start. It was good. It's exactly what I needed. I instantly felt better. I lost about 10 kilos of body fat at this time, which was perfect. I started looking better. My skin started clearing up. I was on this medication for about six months to a year. And then my body weight just would not budge. I couldn't get it under like, I think I was like about 78, 79. I could not get it under. I'm still a coach. I'm training hard like crazy. I didn't cut down my training and I still cannot seem to get this weight down. Weight down. So I went to another doctor and he's just like, oh, this medication's fine. You can stay on this. Um, I'm, I'm not going to change anything. So he wouldn't actually budge it at all. So then I started reading the book called The Paleo Thyroid Fix. I'll put a link below. And it was a really interesting book. But the thing I got out of it, I did the paleo diet. I actually was paleo already at the time. I was extremely clean with my diet. I didn't eat anything. I was a voice. So technically I was paleo. So I didn't have to change it. Um, and then she talked about t3 and t4 in it and that was the first time i've actually heard about t3 so from here i ended up doing some research to find a doctor in brisbane that would give me t3 and thank god this book there's been a, a blog with a bunch of women and there's someone local to brisbane that recommended this one endocrinologist out of green slots hospital in brisbane i'll also put his contacts below if anyone's interested and that guy was my game changer. So instantly he could see there was a problem. He took me off the natural thyroid medication and put me straight on to uh, thyroxine. So this thyroxine is just T4. Now I went to him originally saying, I want T3. And he said, well, I can't give you T3. So he could give me T3 if we could prove that my body was not making T3 for a couple of months. So he put me on the thyroxine. I felt fine. I felt okay. Still no changes. And then this is this is already two and a half years into my journey at this point. Now he put me on the thyroxine and then a couple of months and then a month or so later I had such bad adrenal fatigue. Like even today I still can't get through a day without taking a nap. That's when I know my thyroid is not good because I'm having to nap. I am a walking zombie. I like to mention that 
before I started going on thyroxine, about six months, I'm going to say a year ago now, I was up to about 10 coffees a day and coffee ended up not doing anything. I had to drink about two or three coffees before I could even start work. I started work at 5.30 in the morning. Even if I slept my eight, nine, 10 hours, I still had to inhale coffee. Otherwise I could not get through the day. I was exhausted. Now, before between those two doctors, there was a lot of dietitians and specialists in between. I went on the ketogenic diet, I worked with a lot of people that say they are amazing with hypothyroidism. I tried probably about six or seven dietitians and did all their protocols in that time and none of them did anything. I might lose a kilo here and then gain another two, three kilos. So at this point, I'm still sitting in the high 70 kilos. Now, went to this doctor and got this medication and then within a month or so because of my adrenal fatigue, he put me on low dose naltrexone. Now this is a medication that's usually used for people with opioid addiction and they can treat with lower doses. They give it to people with arthritis and inflammatory disorders and it helps with your adrenals and helps with your fatigue. So pretty much within a couple months, I automatically felt like a bundle of energy. Like I had so much more energy. I cut my coffee down to about three coffees a day and it definitely made a huge impact on my mood and my ability to function throughout the day. Now I like to point out this time I still have not changed any of my training. Uh, I trained as much as I could. Of course, there were days that I was exhausted, but I, I being like mentally strong, I did tend to push through most of those things and just kind of kept rolling or kept lifting even if I felt like crap. Now, it's so funny because I think I need to mind map this whole thing because there's so many other stories in this whole journey that I could go up, but I'll stick to the medication for now. Um, so within a couple of months, I got to prove that my body was making absolutely no T3 medication. My blood showed it and it put me on T3 and I instantly, within a couple of weeks, felt so much better. I am now at about 70 kilograms of body fat, which is amazing considering I was sitting around 90 a couple of years ago. So I am extremely happy with that. But now I'm on a new set of, of a journey. So that was in, at Christmas time and now we are in, uh, in August. So I decided to reach out to a naturopath because I feel like my blood, I'm in range, but I'm still having so many symptoms and I'm still not as lean as I was before I started with the hypothyroidism. So I've still got another six to 10 kilos left of body fat that I can lose, that I feel a lot more comfortable if I can lose these. And I recently found out that because of all of this whole journey, I'm no longer fertile at the moment. And because I'm 28 years old, I feel like I, want to have the option to be fertile if I want to and I don't want this to dictate the fact that I can't have kids one day. So we did a cortisone test, cortisone? cortisol test to test where my stress hormones were and we found out that I have four times the amount of cortisol as the average human being of what I should sit at. Now you could probably look at me and most people look at me and do not see me as a stress person whatsoever. You can never guess I am inside the most stressful person in the world. The thing is, I don't know how to release stress. I can't meditate. I can't sit and focus through this journey. I've tried meditation challenges so many times. I did the 30 day challenge, but can never really get into it. And I just kind of found it a waste of time. I found it boring. For years, I've tried doing breathing exercises and I felt nothing from it. Um, I've tried to find ways to relax, but I'm not a person that can relax. So it was not a surprise to me when I saw my blood result to be the cortisol so high, but it was a surprise the fact that we just went through lockdown here in Queensland and we pretty much opened up and I actually lost about three or four kilos over lockdown with that trying because I was a lot more relaxed, because I wasn't doing jujitsu, because I wasn't lifting heavy weight, because I was going for nice long walks, because I was enjoying my days, I was sleeping more, I was eating well, I actually ended up losing weight. So I know that my whole issue from the start, it was triggered through cortisol, it's triggered from stress, but I didn't really understand the impact that it had fully on my body this whole time. So my cortisol was so high, and then I found out I had a um, prolactin, is it prolactin? Another issue with something else in my blood that can be done through um, caused because of hypothyroidism, and I was also about six times the amount of a normal person with that, and that is the reason why I'm not fertile at the moment. So there's two new journey issues that I need to figure out. So what decisions I have made lately because of this? I have tried to hide, the, not hide, but I've tried to deny the fact that all of this is because of cortisol, all this is because of stress, because if you look at me and you talk to, talk to me, you never guess 
I have a cortisol issue. I, you never guess I'm a, I'm a bundle of stress. Like it does not make sense for me to have a cortisol issue considering how positive and how happy and how smiley I usually am. Um, but the truth is that I am this and then I crash and then I'm exhausted. I'm in bed for hours upon hours. I can go to, I can lay in bed and it feels like a, it feels like a bus has hit me and I physically cannot move my arm. Like I can have an alarm go off when I'm that tired and I can sit there listening to it for hours and not have the energy to stand up and turn it off because I, my body just feels so heavy. There's no chance of moving even a finger. So that shows how exhausted that you can get with the hypothyroidism thing. So where I am at with my new chapter, my new journey that I would love to share with you guys. And if you guys have been through the same journey or in a different part of this journey, please let me know and let me know what's worked for you because this is a science experiment. Everybody's completely different. Every medication I've been from, every diet I've tried has been good for a little bit. Some have been good for a year or so, but it always seems to be something new each time. So at the moment, I'm doing daily breathing exercises. I'm switching between box breathing, slow breathing, and Wim Hof breathing, depending on how I'm feeling. I'm just kind of finding YouTube videos that I like and um, go with the flow. It's funny, when I first did Wim Hof breathing, in that you have to exhale, you have to hold your exhale. I couldn't hold for more than 15 seconds. Uh, I'll end up being and feeling like I have to gasp for air, which is surprising because I talk so much without breathing. Um, but then now I can hold my breath, hold my exhale for about a minute. So I can tell it's definitely got a lot better. I have started, I read the book Breath, um, which I'll put another link in below, which was an amazing book. And that has actually made me start get start to get into breathing. And breath with breath, I've started mouth taping. Now I've known about mouth taping for a fair few years with people like Ben Greenfield and all the other things I've looked into, but I've never actually given it a go because I'm assuming I'm a mouth breather. I don't think I breathe very well through my nose, which this has definitely proved that. So with the mouth tape, what you do is you fall, I'll do a video on it, fall asleep with tape on your mouth and you try and sleep the whole night through breathing through your nose. And this will help decrease your cortisol as well as a box of other issues. Now, I can't get through the whole night. I pull it off all the time. I'm only a couple weeks into doing mouth taping and I'm hoping within a month or so I can actually sleep a whole night with it. My partner can sleep the whole night, no issue. He absolutely loves it. He says sleep quality is so much better. So from as of this week, I've decided to drop jujitsu. I've only had two sessions back since um, since lockdown, but as hard as it is, I'm now purple belt with four stripes. I'm so close to my brown belt. I was planning on getting my brown belt mid-year, except COVID kind of got in the way. But it's just, it puts my body in fight or flight and it's doing so much damage that if I don't stop the heavy lifting, if I don't stop the wrestling and I don't stop the stressing and I don't start breathing and meditating and walking and relaxing, then I don't understand, I don't know where my body's going to be by the time I'm 35. Like, I don't know if it's going to be full of cancer. I don't know if it's going to be heading towards an early death. I don't know if it's going to be depressed. I don't know if I'm ever going to have a chance to have kids. Like... Mostly if I try and fix these issues by the time I'm 35 and it takes two, three years to fix my adrenals, by that time the chance of having kids is like zero. So not that I know exactly if I want to have kids yet, I just don't want to not have the option because of the damage I did to my body when I was younger. Now with my body, I've always said I'm shooting for 100, but with the high cortisol and everything is kind of done to my body, I don't think I will let that kind of be possible until I fix these things. So I think that is everything. Congratulations if you sat through pretty much a whole 20 minute video of me talking about my life story and my thyroid, well done. But that is my journey so far and it has definitely been quite a journey. Now, if you're on a similar journey, if you're at the start, if you're at the start, if I, I have a video of me filming the first nine months of my thyroid journey and I watched it today and one, I look so much leaner in the face, so I'm happy about that. My skin is perfect again, so I'm very happy about that. But my God, if she only knew that that nine month journey was nothing, she was so optimistic. She was just like, I want to lose all this body fat. I got this. It's going to be quick. It's going to be easy. And I'm looking at it now. I'm like, oh, honey, you don't understand the journey you're about to go on. Like it's going to be a journey. Now, if you're at the start of your journey, understand that it's about patience. Find the cause of what is causing yours. If it is stress, don't wait until four, down, four years down the track until you accept the fact that it's stress and actually decide that you're going to fix it. Try and fix it there and then. Um, and I understand that I do have, like my sister has an autoimmune disease, she's type 1 diabetic. I have all my aunties have hypothyroidism. I'm just kind of prone to these things. It was bound to happen eventually, but it doesn't mean I can't get it under control and I believe I can get it under control. So if you're on the side of your journey, be patient, keep doing your research, 
keep going to doctors don't listen to just one doctor there's always another doctor even doctors that i've been to have been amazing like the endocrinologist he got me into the range for the first time my t4 and t3 is in a range but it's still low and it's not optimal and as a trainer as a coach as someone that wants to live life to the fullest i want to be optimal i don't want to be sleeping all day i don't want to feel like crap i don't want to worry that i'm gonna go eating out and gain all this body fat i want to be lean again and i want to look good and if i stay with just him i'm not going to get those results so the goal is to move to the next person and say this is where i'm at my journey this is where people got me can you get me to the next step there's always another expert that can get you to that next step and you should keep searching for it now if you are a, a past me in your journey and you've done more than what i have i'd love to hear what's worked for you when i first started out i watched every possible youtube story i could on hyperthyroids i watched every girl story and most of them were like this 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 their, their things lasted a year like within a year they were fine within a year they no longer had suffering like they did keto and then no longer they don't have thyroid issues or they did this diet or they stopped this or they started exercising and like my body didn't work like that i tried all those things and it just didn't have the same results as those girls did so understand that what I did might not work for you and what I'm doing now might not work for you. You've got to find out what exactly works for you because every journey is going to be different. So thank you guys so much for checking out my video. I'm going to do a few more videos on things like the mouth taping, how I kind of eat for my thyroid, uh, a couple of the medications I'm on. I'm on a few supplements now. I'll go through a couple of my blood results and any of the exercise or the yoga or things like that I'm starting to do because Honestly, I kind of wish this video exists when I first started. So I'm going to do this so there might be someone out there that needs this video just like I did. So thank you guys so much for checking out the video. Uh, thumbs up, subscribe. And in the meantime, keep being strong, happy and healthy.